what is entrepreneurship why do we need entrepreneurship and what is entrepreneur all about promote small cottage and local industry very important point let me just take a minute there why because we as an entrepreneurship are more concentrated on the msme segment problems of marketing lack of awareness about career in agri and entrepreneurship which is very very important here Good morning and welcome to the model question paper solving in entrepreneurship and small business management. This is in the sixth semester BBA. Now let's try to understand what are the important questions that are going to appear in the examination, how you need to write and how you need to score more. Starting up with the 15 mark question that's coming up here. Now the first question is define the term entrepreneur, explain the role of entrepreneur in economics. So in the first part you're going to have two questions of 15 marks each, that's a 30 marks. Very very important, why because 30 marks is a big weightage that you are getting right from one single section. So if you are able to solve just two questions, write two questions correctly, you will get 30 marks straight into your account. So that's why I would say that please pay attention in terms of writing it neatly, legibly with examples, you will be able to score more. So starting with the first question, define the term entrepreneur, very simple one, entrepreneurship is the ability and the readiness to develop, organize and run a business enterprise. So as an entrepreneur, the moment you start the answer, your aim of writing should be to first open up the context, introduce the context in terms of what is entrepreneurship, why do we need entrepreneurship and what is entrepreneur all about. So it is basically his ability, his thought process, his readiness to start a business and run it successfully. Now, there might be a lot of uncertainties that come across his way, but still he believes that he will be able to make a profit there. So that's why I would always say that though the entrepreneur knows that there is risk, though the entrepreneur knows that there are challenges, but still there is a way in terms of making a profit. So the most prominent example of entrepreneurship is starting a new business. So in economics, we are connecting this entrepreneurship with labor, land, natural resources, capital to generate profit. So as we start explaining the answer, we start going into the factors of vision, indispensable to the national economy, the capacity to develop new business and take it forward in terms of growth followed by the meaning of entrepreneur. It's defined as someone who has an ability to desire to establish, run his own business. Most of us can take ourselves as an example because sometime down the lane, we would have aspired that we want to do a business, we want to start something new. That itself is a very clear example of entrepreneurship. So you can put down your ideas. If you have thought about starting a business, that's what exactly an entrepreneur is all about. So entrepreneur will try to start a new venture. He will try to develop that venture. He will try to bring in new ideas. He will try to bring in the market with better products and service so that he is able to serve the nation and also serve his profit ideology altogether. Followed by the next question, what is entrepreneurship development program explain its importance? Now this is a repeated question, very important question and it is quite you know interesting enough to see it because this will try to make us understand the need for an EDP program. So how do you start going about it? You have to first tell the objective of EDP. EDP is a training program that has been given to the entrepreneur. So what are the objectives of that training program? Let's look at the first objective to promote the first generation entrepreneurs and businessmen to create awareness about the availability of resources 
promote small cottage and local industry very important point let me just take a minute there why because we as an entrepreneurship are more concentrated on the msme segment so try to mention that point very very clearly when you are writing the examination because the concentration is on the small medium enterprises to encourage self employment tendencies which are important today to provide knowledge about government plans and programs yet another interesting factor for all of us to see because this is what we intend to do as a business as a growth as an employment factor here so this is highly recommended highly needed for us in terms of providing the knowledge in terms of providing about how to take forward in the business plans and the activities followed by explain about the pm mudra scheme this is a recent question and also an important question why because of late you would have read in the newspapers tv and different social media platform that they are asking about the importance of mudra yojana this is a very important uh, option that has been given by the government in terms of for the entrepreneurs to start the business so we are going to understand about the pm mudra yojana and the sectors which are going to be covered under this particular scheme now look at the answer the pradhan mantri mudra yojana is a flagship scheme let me put that word it's a flagship scheme of the government of india to fund the unfunded i'm just using this word why because most of the entrepreneurs really lack in terms of fund they don't get the necessary capital to start the business and take it forward so that's why the pradhan mantri mudra yojana is considered to be one of the apex in terms of bringing it in forward so that's why i would say that this is a very very important thing and the, such an enterprise which creates a formal finance financial system in terms of extending affordable credit that is available to them it enables the small borrower to borrow all public related sector banks such as psu banks regional rural banks cooperative banks private sector banks and the foreign banks micro financial institution all these kind of factors all these kind of institutions are a part of this mudra yojana so for you while writing the answer make it sure that you involve all these names the micro financial institutions the nbfcs and the service providers who are working day and night in terms of providing loans to this young entrepreneurs and they can go up to 10 lakh rupees for a non farm income generating activity and the scheme was launched on 8 april 2015 by the honorable prime minister of india followed by next question where we are going to look in here explain the various steps involved in establishment of a new enterprise if you just look into this question it's a very very generic and uh, open type question it's a very general question anybody can take up this question and answer it in your own words so if you know how to arrange yourself if you know just how to put things together you will be able to score really well in this question so we start with the first topic here called as i idea generation we all know that any business in this world started with a simple and a small idea so idea generation is the first step for us in terms of starting up a business followed by opportunity evaluation though there are multiple opportunities and ideas that is floating around us but not all the ideas not all the opportunities will be feasible enough so you need to evaluate each and every opportunity that has been presented to you you need to check whether this particular opportunity would be the best opportunity for me so that's why opportunity evaluation is the second step followed by planning which is the most important part of any business even you want to do the smallest work a smallest activity we need to plan so imagine when you are going to start a million dollar enterprise you need to plan thoroughly each and every step as how this business needs to be how we need to take it forward followed by the company formation and launch factor once every single activity resources are in place your plan is completely secured and built then you will start getting into the formation of the company 
and launch it up in the market. So that's what we call it as the company formation and the launch factor, followed by the growth factor. After the launch, the company starts working towards a particular, uh, you know, creating a particular product or service, generating revenue, moving towards a sustainable performance level. The emphasis shifts from planning to execution. At this point, you can ask questions where you spend time in terms of, you know, going forward. How are you going to carry out the plan? So probably all you just need to do is that arrange yourself systematically while writing an answer to a question like this, which you would be able to score better. Followed by, now let's move on to the next session where we're going to uh, talk about the 10 marks question. You have to write two 10 marks question of 20. So that's a total factor here, two into 10, 20 marks. Let's start with the first question. Briefly explain the challenges faced by the women entrepreneurship. Now this is a very important thing. So you will be able to write it. The problem of finance, which is there in every single economy. So automatically there is going to be some challenges that we are going to look into it. The scarcity of the raw material, the stiff competition, limited mobility, family ties which are coming into picture. Then we are going to talk about the discuss the various assistance that has been provided by the SFCs and the NBFCs which towards the entrepreneurs. So let's just go forward here. The state financial corporation which is an integral part of the institutional finance which is very much structured in terms of it. They promote the small and medium industries in the state plus they also help in ensuring a balanced regional development, a higher investment, employment generation and broadened activities. So definitely if you look into the program of the state financial corporation, uh, if you look into the industrial development activity, there are many people who actually join hands together in terms of promotion of the activity, in terms of promoting a better visualization of how the business can be done, how financial support can be provided, the steps involved in setting up that business. So definitely a state financial corporation is a very big boon in disguise for the entrepreneurs who will be able to make the business even more effective. Followed by explain any two institutions engaged in EDP in India. When I say EDP, Entrepreneurship Development Program, so basically the training institute. So you can start with the Small Services Industry Institute, the SISI, the SIDO, then the National Small Scale Industry, the NSIC, the small extension about it, then the Entrepreneurship Development Institute of India. Now if you look here, these are some of the major institute which I am putting across in circles. Why? Because these are all those institute which will train the entrepreneurs which will make them understand the importance of entrepreneurship today and how this becomes a critical factor for an entrepreneur to take up and start developing and become a leader in that particular segmentation so definitely the small industry service institute these uh, industries these sectors are one thing where they create tailor-made programs they have certain specific programs which are being created for the entrepreneur to attend take it over a period of time they can be one month they can be six months one year program which have been created for the training of entrepreneurs. So you need to mention the name of those training institute, write a few lines about them as in what kind of programs, how do they train and what is their importance in terms of promoting entrepreneurship in India. Followed by business ethics, which is very, very important. Again, it's a generic question. That's what I would like to say in this paper. You have a lot of opportunity in terms of opening up yourself and expressing, which means to say that you'll get a a lot of generic questions where you can write your own views and opinion. All that is needed is that you just have to frame the sentence legibly correct in a you know in an orderly manner so that you will be able to score more in this paper. Now let's look at this question. When I talk about business ethics, the first thing is that are you trying to comply with all the government rules and regulations that have been provided? A good business organization will try to see that they are complying with the rules and regulation, followed by the payment of taxes which they would do on a regular basis. Next, to correct the government in terms of not to correct the government machinery or we don't try to, you know, make corruptions there, not to seek political patronage to cooperate with the government in terms of economic development. So we try to look in for the right steps that are needed in terms of functioning with the government and following the rules and regulations. 
followed by let's look into this factor where we are going to talk about uh, the uh, problems state the problems of agricultural entrepreneurship the five markers questions that are coming up here now the lack of skilled and managerial manpower that's very much needed lack of infrastructural facilities problems of marketing lack of awareness about career in agri and entrepreneurship which is very very important here inefficient or lack of equipments and technologies which we are talking about high infrastructural and distribution costs unresponsive and governmental politics so you if you look here you can probably point out all the negative factors that are coming in terms of the uh, managerial economics that's coming into picture why because you would see that most of the times these are the challenges that are being faced here there's a problem of marketing lack of awareness which coming in uh, not much of efficiency in terms of the government mechanisms the rules regulations so many political changes all these factors will affect the entrepreneurship followed by state the difference between professional manager and entrepreneur again an open ended question which you can write now the difference between an entrepreneur and manager is in the role of the organization which is going to come into picture entrepreneur is a visionary person so the first thing that you need to underline that he is a visionary who converts an idea into a business he is a owner of the business so he will bear all the risk factor whereas a manager is only an employee so he will work for a salary he doesn't have to bear the risk the focus of entrepreneurship will lie on creating and expanding business the focus of a manager will lie only in functioning of the business so look at the key points one side a risk taking personality the other side a work oriented personality one side on the expansion and vision the other side the objective orientation factor so all these things would be one of the most important functions that you need to mention in the examination when they are asking you a difference between entrepreneur and manager now for entrepreneur the key motivation is achievement for manager it's only about the job factor that we are trying to talk about the efforts of a entrepreneur is on the profit side the manager is an employee so salary himself becomes a great motivation for him so please do mention these points in your exam to score more followed by the entrepreneur can be informal casual in his role but the manager has to be strict in terms of solving every problem entrepreneur by nature is a risk taker but a manager does not have to be he is a risk averse personality a reason being is that he doesn't want to take any risk in his job so he will try to work in such a manner to avoid the risk rather than taking up that risk factor now write a note on a project report that's very very important quite interesting it will start with the general information about the project the executive summary of the project organization summary of the project the project description which has been spoken about the marketing plan that has to be presented capital structure and operating cost so all these factors have to be there in your answer so you will start with the general information you will mention about the executive summary you will mention about organization summary the project description the marketing plan the capital structure and that of the operating cost followed by what are the main schemes of the si dbi this is one generic question which has been asked many times so small equipment finance is provided loans under partnership with original equipment manufacturing which is available today in the market so we talk about people like mahindra and mahindra which are original equipment manufacturing they also help you in working capital they give you a trade finance scheme through which small time traders who are looking for 50000 1 lakh 2 lakhs kind of amount can be financed so these are some of the schemes that are available under SIDBI in terms of working towards the entrepreneurship now with that i come to the end of this particular session i hope and believe that this session would be of a great information and resource to you in terms of writing your examination and getting the best marks as far as possible thank you once again for joining me today on this wonderful session